Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Adam with the Ackleberry. Today I'm going to be doing a review of my Wilderness Systems Aspire 105. Now this boat has actually been designated uh, as a recreational boat, of course. Wilderness Systems on their website says that it is uh, used for slow, uh, should I say, I'm sorry, flat to slow moving water. So we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit, but we're going to go over kind of some of the different sections that I want to show you about this boat so you have a very good idea by the end of this video what you're looking for in this boat, what it's going to be good for, and if it's right for you. So this boat is said to be 10 foot 6 inches long. Now that's assuming that you haven't piton that boat anytime real soon. For those of you that don't know what a piton is, that's when you run your boat nose first uh, right into the center of a rock. Good time. The weight of this boat is 48 pounds. Uh, the cockpit length is said to be 51 and a half inches long but here's what I got when I put the tape measure to it and then the width is said to be 23 and a half inches long but here's what I got when I put the tape measure to it as well this one's actually rated for 400 pounds so that's fantastic for being a 10 and a half foot boat being able to load 400 pounds in here is great now that's counting your weight plus your gear weight this boat is also said to have a deck height of 15 and a half inches so here's what I got when I measured the deck height now one of the things that I really wanted to point out to you about this boat is it's very easy to handle. One of the things that I can say about this boat when I first took it out on a lake was how uh, responsive it was and easy to turn from left to right and kind of spin around right there on the water. Now it's not going to spin as easy as a whitewater boat would of course, but for what it is uh, it turns fantastically. Probably takes two, uh, maybe three strokes to get that thing to turn a 180, so that's great. So what that's good for is, number one, you can get turned around quickly, of course. Um, I've had a 14 and a half foot a wilderness system tsunami and it takes forever uh, to turn that boat around. But this one, and most of them that are uh, this length, is a lot easier to get them to turn. But when you're going through any type of rapids, the good news about that is you can also adjust and maneuver just a little bit better uh, in this boat in some of the rapids, which would help you to kind of get your position or if you're off on your line a little bit to correct a little bit uh, in the middle of it. So that's fantastic. That does keep you uh, being able to run that rapid just a little bit better. So one of the other things that I think that people are concerned about when they're picking out a kayak is stability. For folks who are recreational users and things like that, it is a question of, is this boat going to flip me? And uh, in most cases, no boat is going to actually just flip you. It's going to take some work on your part. But for this boat, I'm going to say that it is extremely stable uh, for what it is. In other words, it's never going to just dump you in the water, especially in flat water, um, which is what I'm talking about most of the time. You're going to have to get your center of gravity on this boat pretty far over to get it to want to actually turn over on you. So unless you were absolutely trying, it's going to be very difficult on flat water for this boat to just capsize on you. So, and I think that um, you can lean pretty far in this boat before it actually wants to roll on you. So, so I would say that stability on this boat is fantastic. Even when you go through some rapids, some of the stability with this boat is gonna help out. Now, if you get a lot of water building up on one of these edges or one of these sides, it's still going to wanna roll that boat, but that's in a pretty um, heavy moving water. So anything that's just little class ones and stuff like that, you're probably gonna be just fine. So now I wanna talk to you about tracking. Some of the frustrations of having a boat, and even a small 10 and a half foot boat, is that the tracking can be challenging. Some of the longer boats, you have a nice keel that goes along or underneath it. Um, you have rudders, uh, things like that, that help you stay straight. But even with a longer boat, a lot of them, a lot of the designs they have, help them to stay straight. Now, shorter boats, they have a tendency to want to turn on you a little bit. This one will actually stay straight. Uh, for a longer period of time. If I'm sitting here paddling this boat, it likes to stay straight just with the way that it's designed now. And I'll kind of show you the design of it after a little bit. But that's one of the fantastic things about this is it will actually be a less of a hassle for you to keep straight. Now, on top of that, this boat actually has a skeg system, which is going to help you uh, stay straight even easier if it wasn't already. Uh, and even in, sometimes you get into rivers where you have swirly water, there's some there's some uh, features underneath the water rocks and stuff that might cause the water to kind of swirl around and stuff. And this skeg will actually help you uh, to stay straight. So let me just kind of show you that real briefly and we'll probably end up touching on it again. The skeg for some of you that don't know is something. Here's what the boat looks like now. And when I drop this skeg, if I can one handed, 
there's going to be that piece that drops out. Now, the cool thing about this skeg is it acts like a little fin. It actually ends up keeping you going straight, keeping the, the, the boat going straight. So that way the boat can't spin either left or right with, with water pushing on it. It's actually going to have this that's going to block the movement from left to right, which is fantastic. This is what you call a drop-down skeg. Uh, we'll talk more about that here in just a minute. Since we're talking about the topic of being able to... Or, or the topic of the tracking on the boat. One thing I want to show you on my other Wilderness Systems Aspire 105 is that I have actually I have actually modded this boat with a rudder. On little 10 and a half foot boats you don't necessarily need a rudder. They're kind of easy to turn on their own but just having a rudder that you can operate with your feet kind of helps if you're just kind of wanting to relax a little bit but you're needing to kind of steer and weave in and out a little features on the river and maybe you want to eat a snack or, or drink some coffee or whatever it is that you're doing you can actually end up kind of driving that boat where you want it to go um, without having to use a paddle and that's fantastic so the the reason i mentioned this on this boat is to let you know that it can be modded out to have uh, a rudder on it so these pedals that are in here were bought off of amazon this um foot pedal track has been installed and modded onto this boat and you basically just end up turning the rudder by pushing forward on this pedal or the opposite one and that's what would end up actually uh, turning your rudder here so the other thing about this boat that people are always asking about or any kayak that they're wanting to pick on actually is what about the comfort how long am I gonna be able to sit in that before it starts hurting how does the seat feel one of the things that Wilderness Systems is known for is their phase 3 Air Pro seats which are extremely comfortable. Now you can find all kind of information about this online, but these things are modded to do all kind of stuff with the back being able to go up and down, this part being able to be raised and lowered to be uh, to fit you flawlessly, makes this a very, very, very comfortable seat. I can tell you that we've spent hours sitting in these seats um, with no problem. Now, it doesn't matter what seat you get in, you spend enough time in it, it's going to get to you eventually. But what I can tell you is, is that if you have a little bit of back pain in this one, you could end up just adjusting the height of the seat into different parts of your lower back, which then um, could make it quite a bit more comfortable for you as well. So While we're talking about the seat, one of the things I wanted to show you is on the side of the seat, there's actually quite a bit of room here that you can stuff items to be able to store you can put a bilge pump on this side you can put maps on that side you can stuff a uh, a, um, a rain jacket on that side lots of things that you can put over there sometimes i put my trail mix uh on the side i've rolled up my skirt and stuck it over there a lot of things that you can do so another one of the features that people uh, are interested in when they get these type of kayaks if you are wanting to carry something along with you or maybe you want to do an overnighter uh, do a little bit of kayak camp or something like that is storage now the Aspire 105 does come with uh, some storage back here. There's a bulkhead behind the seat that separates the cockpit from this storage area. And you can see the uh, bulkhead on the inside there as well. It's just a thick piece of foam that keeps the water out. So here's the dimensions uh, that I measured for the uh, rear compartment here. And the thing that's awesome about the Wilderness system, Systems one is you can see that the, the color of this is gray and that the, uh, the molded uh, gray lid here or attachment point is actually then attached by screws into the Wilderness Systems uh, polyethylene mold here. And the good thing about that is, is a lot of times these polyethylene boats here can end up warping a little bit around this uh, area right here causing the lid not to give a good fit. Well, since this is uh, made out of the same material here, this one is going to keep its structure, regardless of what the boat mold is trying or boat, pla boat plastic is trying to do. So that way, when you close this, it's going to be an exact fit uh, every time. I think that's their intention. So, plenty of storage space in here. You would be um, surprised how much you can actually fit into this. The one thing that I do want to point out is this skeg right here. There's where your skeg is coming up into the boat the one that you saw drop down earlier and that hose right there is where the cordage is dropping through the boat in the bottom to pull the skeg uh, up after when you're done using it so you can see that it's got a little bit of um maybe some silicone or something sealing it but that the the, the unfortunate thing about this is this skeg takes up 
a lot of the room. So what I want to do is kind of cross this or, or compare this with a dagger axis uh, that I have, which also has a drop down skeg, but they did this one a little bit differently. And I think it's to kind of help save a little bit of room. So here, let me show you this. The dagger axis here actually has a skeg system in the very back where the rope or the cordage comes out here and you can actually see the skeg there and that's where it comes up and down. So the cool thing about that is, is the actual skeg part is pushed a little bit more towards the back so it kind of prevents from having to block up much of this area. It still does take up some of the storage, but not as much, I believe, as the uh, Aspire does. If you don't find that you have enough storage space with this one, and oftentimes I do not when I go kayak camping, there's plenty of space even up in the bow portion of the kayak uh, behind the pedals, pedals here. Or the foot peg, should I say. I'm going to try to show you that underneath. Um, try to put the camera under there and see if you can kind of see the room that's behind it. So here's what you're looking at behind there. It kind of shows up a little bit. There's an, actually a foam block here, which kind of creates a little bit of structure. Um, so the bow doesn't crush in super easy. And gives it a little bit of flotation as well, if it were to be swamped a little bit. But on this side, and on this side, it goes all the way up to the point of the kayak, which is going to give you plenty of room. And I've stuffed things up in there that I didn't want to get wet, such as a camping chair. Uh, I put up in there or anything else that you want to put maybe potentially in a dry bag um, and you can kind of easily push them behind there. There's plenty of room between this foot peg and right here so you could actually end up laying in a 20 liter bag back and forth across here. You may want to mount it in there a little bit if you can but uh, it, it can actually sit behind there and your feet will never end up hitting it depending on where your foot pegs are here. And if you're a shorter person, whatever the foot pegs can even come up closer and you'd have even more room here. But so there's still plenty of places to put something up there. I wouldn't store or take anything with you that you were concerned about being wet because that's most likely gonna get wet either from water getting in your boat from a rapid, if you didn't have a skirt on or even from you putting your feet in here um, if you're getting in your boat from the water. Storage space on this kayak can be, it's, it's, it's kind of a little bit of illusion because you can fit a whole lot more than what you would think into these boats. Again, I wanted to point out behind the seat, you can fit a 20 liter bag here. Actually, you can fit more than that. You could probably get a 20 liter and a 10 liter back here. But what I often do is I end up putting my uh, water bottles behind here or um, a waterproof casing behind there. Maybe if you got camera batteries and stuff. So behind this seat is pretty good. I mean, look at that room. Fantastic, as opposed, as opposed to the dagger axis here, which has little room behind it. Still enough to put some water bottles and stuff, but certainly not a 20 liter dry bag. I wanted to talk to you real quick about what could this handle as far as rapids are concerned. Rapids are a lot of fun on a river. Flat water is fine if you're really concerned about not wanting to be tipped out of a boat, but honestly, it can get boring pretty quick. So I want to talk to you about how this thing would handle in rapids. Now, the Wilderness Systems um, website says that it'll do flat or slow moving water. And I think it can do a little bit more. I've had it going through class two rapids uh, and I believe it could go through a small class three or something that's not real technical. Now, you know, if you were wanting to just have a, have a little bit of fun, you weren't concerned about dumping out and stuff, this is gonna do just fine. It's got plenty of stability that's gonna keep you upright, assuming you don't just almost throw yourself overboard or as long as you don't get broached up on a rock, again, with the water pushing down on the edge of this. But I wanna show you a little bit of uh, the differences of why this boat probably isn't gonna take you past that and you probably shouldn't take it with you uh, on anything that has a bunch of rapids on it or continuous flow or anything like that because it's just not, in the end, it's just gonna kind of fail you. Remember, this is a recreational kayak, but here's some of the reasons I'm gonna show you of why it won't be uh, helpful in rapids above probably a class two, or maybe why you might find some issue with it going through some larger class twos. So one of the cool things about the Aspire 105 is that the cockpit is big enough for you to get in and out like super, super easy. It's not a tight fit by any means, very easy to get into, very comfortable. But I was telling you about the problem with it as far as using it on rapids, anything, you know, that starts to get a little bit substantial and super challenging, is this is kind of how I sit in the Aspire. And so it's a very wide open cockpit. I'm not really wearing the boat um, like you would in a whitewater boat, something that would handle rapids a little better. But you can see that my knees are actually not really in the boat, but they're just kind of up here resting on these pads. This is very comfortable sitting for me. You know, I could paddle like this for quite a while 
um, get in and out of the boat very easily. But one of the things that helps you get through rapids or um, being able to edge a boat correctly to make sure that one of your sides is lifted up or the other one so that way you can allow water to go under you because if water piles up on one of your edges it's going to pull that side of your kayak under. So one of the things that uh, about a whitewater boat that makes it easy to handle rapids is that if your knees are locked up in the boat you can actually be able to control it with your knees or your hips. Well you can't do that so well in this boat because your knees aren't even actually in the boat. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about uh, when I jump into my whitewater boat here in just a second. But So although this is a very comfortable position you don't have very much control of this boat with more than just a paddle. A lot of times when you're going to brace in water, and I'm not a big whitewater guru, but when you go to brace in whitewater you want to get your paddle down, but then you want to use your hips to right your boat. I can do that a little bit. Like if you see me rocking around here, look at how little this boat rocks, okay? It's going back and forth a little bit, but I'm kind of moving quite a bit on the inside of it. And that's going to really differ when I show you in the whitewater boat. So I could go through some rapids and stuff. I can bounce off rocks and stuff just fine on this, but I'm going to have very little control. I'm going to put, be putting a lot of the um, uh, just kind of hope it turns out good. So when I bounce off of rocks and stuff. So um, let me show you what it looks like in the whitewater boat um, to, to, for comparison. So what you're seeing here is that my knees are actually locked up under the boat, even with some of these thigh pads. And my hips, you're actually kind of buried in the boat as well. So if I start doing a little bit of hip movement, it, look, it moves this boat quite a bit. Whereas in this one, it would just shake it a little bit. So I can actually move this boat around. So that makes this one a little bit more beneficial in whitewater because I have a lot that I can do with it with just using my hips and my knees along with my paddle, which is why these are specific to whitewater. There's some things you can do in small rapids, but without being able to use your hips and your knees, you're not going to get a lot of control out of this boat either. So now what I want to show you is this is specific to whitewater. This is more recreational. There's a boat um, that I'm going to show you now that's kind of in between, but it still would work out better than the Aspire in rapids, but less than a whitewater boat. So this dagger axis, as you can tell, looks a whole lot like the Aspire 105, about the same length, nice roomy cockpit to get into, and then even a little bit of uh, storage back here in this compartment. So, but the thing about the access, I can get in, get in it, and even with getting in it, I'm actually still able to put my knees up under the sides of it, so I can still, with just hip movement, move this boat quite a bit with my hips and my knees, which is going to make it a little bit more, as far as performance goes, um, on a river, any any rapids of any uh, substantial above, above class two. So. Even a boat like this is going to fare a little bit better than, say, this one will because your knees aren't locked up under it. It would be very difficult for you to put your knees up under that. Also, uh, uncomfortable. So again, I'm not a big whitewater buff, but I hope that kind of explained a little bit of things that you could kind of consider if you were wanting to take this down any rivers that had some significant rapids in it. But now what I wanted to do was kind of go over the points that wilderness systems themselves want you to understand or recognize about this boat. That way, if you were considering buying it, that you would um, at least have a good overview of what you're getting into. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you here on this bow is it's not flat up top. So it's got um, a part that leans off here and then a part that kind of angles off here as well. So when water ends up hitting the top of the deck, it can kind of run off nice and smooth. Even with around the cockpit, if water were to get up here in this little um, recess, it ends up running down along here and then there's like a little cutout point here that's going to allow the water to kind of drain on out so it doesn't sit uh, in here the whole time. Now this uh, kayak is capable of adding a skirt on it that's why you see the slip uh, on the cockpit rim here so it does have a skirt and I'm going to show you that here in a minute as well. There is a skid plate on the back under part of this this is actually removable so if you were dragging this kayak up and down an embankment to the river then it's going to end up wearing down that but of course you would be able to uh, i think wilderness system has it for sale i'm gonna put the link in the description to go to the parts for this boat but they have it for sale and you can just drop those two screws out and put two screws back in and you have a new um, skid plate i would suggest only dragging that if you had to but this boat being at 48 pounds it's not difficult to get it up and actually carry it 
um, on a shoulder like you would a whitewater boat or if you have somebody there it's just better off to go ahead and have a two-person carry and then you kind of save all that extra unneeded uh, wear and tear on your boat one of the big sellers for this boat is the skeg system of course here is the little cordage that deploys that it's got a little wedge system that kind of keeps it from um, allowing it to drop down so when i want to go to drop down this skeg i simply pull on this pull it out of the wedge and allow it the rope to go back in there and even the knot the knot's going to keep it from going back in there too far it's going to stop it right here but when that's deployed that that cordage will be all the way in there and then when we drop down here under the boat you're going to see that the skeg is sticking out like this fantastic for keeping this boat tracking straight now another good thing about this skeg of course it is replaceable you can find parts on think i think austinkayak.com um, is where i was looking for parts it should i need to but this skeg ends up retracting if you go over a rock or hit a, a branch underwater or something like that it's just going to come through push that skeg off and then bounce right out so that allows us to keep it from being uh, destroyed underwater now if you get turned sideways on your boat you want to make sure to go ahead and pull your skeg back up because that doesn't go anywhere side to side and that could end up snapping it off this is made of plastic maybe at one point in time they made it of aluminum but this is a very strong but yet flexible plastic It's actually perfect for this boat and it keeps it from it keeps it being light it does add about a bunch of extra weight to the boat but a very good skeg, a very good job by Wilderness Systems adding that. And that is one of the most fantastic features about this boat. Also, one of the things I showed you earlier that they wanted to point out on their uh, website, of course, is the stern bulkhead. Again, that is a uh, couple inches thick piece of foam that separates this cockpit from the um, compartment in the back. Um, sleeping systems back there, or you were putting some... Um, hammocks you don't want those to get wet and that's what this bulkhead is going to do any water that gets into this cockpit is going to be uh, very difficult to get back into that compartment now these can leak from time to time and it's always good to do a little test where you fill up a little bit of water in this cockpit stand this boat up of course and then see if any is running into this uh, compartment so but fantastic little storage compartment if you were going to end up being uh, kite camping to bring the skeg back up you just simply grab hold of this pull it and when you're sitting in the boat it's very easy and once you get it pulled all the way you want to lift and allow it to sit into that pinch point and that'll hold it from being deployed and then your skeg of course is back up where it needs to be the other thing i wanted to point out to you is the what they call the orbix stern hatch has their nice little emblem in there as well fantastic if you haven't checked out the river kings on youtube make sure to do that they have a a lot of content kayak camping river running white watering a lot of good stuff there make sure you do that I'm, I'm in on a couple of those videos as well good time but the orbix hatch here i kind of pointed out a little bit before fantastic plenty of room uh you can pretty much stuff anything you need this is a great big opening uh fantastic for getting larger items through there this is like a rubber ish seal that i'm touching right here that kind of goes through the whole uh, outside of this this is what this is going to end up pushing into and keeping the water out you want to make sure to try to keep this clear and you want to check it for any damage once this gets seal gets broken and you're going in some water that's coming over the top then you run the risk of water getting in there also again i mentioned how this form ends up being a part of its own hatch and that doesn't allow the you know the maybe if this polyethylene starts to deform some this is going to help keep it from de deforming this Part of the opening to the compartment in which case this is going to fit like it's supposed to every time simple and easy to press down pull these handles and you're locked it does have holes if you do want to put locks on this that's up to you um, i've never used them never been in position to but it's there should you need that and of course they're never going to mention any of their boats without saying something about their seating i agree this is one of the best seating are one of the best kayak seats I've been in very comfortable it's amazing because there's really not that much foam underneath it but the contour to it and again all the uh, uh, adjustability that you can check out on these makes for a fantastic seat even has a nice little uh, mesh sleeve here that you could put a water bottle now I don't usually stick one here uh, I usually end up sitting it down here it's this is perfect this little uh, two bump uh, system that's running along the the bottom hole of this boat it adds rigidity to the hole of course and maybe a little bit of style but is perfect for laying a water bottle right through here it keeps it from going left and right it might shift forward or backwards a little bit which isn't a big deal you, you can sit in the seat and actually tuck it back in here as well one of the other things about this seat is there is a big gap between the plastic framing 
in the back here in the actual seat itself. I have been known to stick my cockpit cover down in here. There's a lot of different things. I have actually tucked my um, rain jacket. I can roll it up and stuff it right in there. And when I'm on the trip, I can just easily come back here and pull it out on these side, the side holes. So that's something to think about too. If you have something small that you wanted to fit down in there, um, you can certainly do that. The other thing that they wanted to point out on their website is the thigh and knee pads. That may not seem like much to you, but if you're spending hours on a river and your knee is sitting against something hard, you are eventually going to start feeling that. So just that little bit of padding does wonders for you. So you can set your knee and your thigh, as you saw me do a little bit earlier, giving you a lot more comfort, which is what these boats are about. And they do a fantastic job of doing that. The other thing that they wanted to point out is what they call their uh, slide lock XL braces. Uh, I like the fact that the foot peg part of this is nice, big, and wide. they got some that are very skinny. Uh, if you happen to piton a rock or something, it's very easy for your feet to sl slip off it, either maybe above or below. But I like the fact that they got a nice, tall, and wide uh, place platform for your foot to go on. This has got a little bit of rubber material on top of it. A lot of times you're getting in your boat, you got a little bit of mud on your feet and dirt, so it's good to know that they have something here that kind of helps to aid in a little bit of traction. Of course, you may have seen this before. Very easy to adjust this. You're talking about just lifting this, pulling on it, and it's going to pull that forwards or it's going to go back. Once you get it to the desired position, then of course you can just lock it back down into place. You just want to make sure you have it the same on both sides. I usually end up counting the gaps here and then comparing it to the other side over here to make sure it's the same. The other thing that they wanted to mention, which I think is so-so, but I can see where it's handy, is they call this... Um, like a cockpit console it's got a little bit of uh bungee cord in it so you can stick things in here this would probably hold a can of soda or a very small water bottle there's another way for you to load set a water bottle like this and maybe let it stick off it this way underneath some bungee cord kind of neat just a little bit um i don't use it honestly uh, if i do like i said i end up putting my water bottle right here because I usually end up having my camera equipment on this uh, rail, which does not come on this boat. I put that on there. I usually have my camera equipment, so I don't have anything up here if I can help it. Plus, if I'm using a skirt, this pretty much makes this area obsolete. So this is, if you're just out on a flat water and you want to put something small in here, you can do that. You can set your snacks in there and easy to access. It's, of course, the bungee rigging. What you're seeing here is what I use to... Um, tether off my camera when it's up there I'll, I'll tether that off it's very important there's been so many cameras at the bottom of rivers um, it's important to tether it but this bungee cord you don't really know that you need it or you don't really know that you miss it until you do need it so this part actually ends up hooking up in here like this but there's just so many different ways you can work this bungee cord system I put um, uh, rain jackets under it I put all kind of stuff underneath this some people will put um, their bilge pump under this uh, just lots of different uses for this I will tell you and then of course it does help to have some handles that are easy to carry a lot of times when you have these boats weighed down with gear and you're needing to portage them around maybe a, um, a low head bridge or something like that uh, it, it makes it nice when this stuff isn't cutting into your fingers or into your hands so again I'd recommend uh, having two people help you carry the boat uh, just to kind of help save on wear and tear. I have had one of these pop out, and it was just because over time, um, and I've got it pretty tight now, honestly, but these things will kind of spin back and forth. It doesn't now because I've tightened it down, and that ends up working that screw out. So when you, if you get your boat, make sure you've got this thing screwed in all the way. So one of the other things I wanted to show you about this boat is its hull. So here's a good look at it from the rear part here. It does have, um, I want to mention real quick, this flat part here that you could mod a rut on if you wanted to. But here is the skid plate that's replaceable. You can see the screws down in there. Just pop those out, pop a new skid plate on, and you're good to go. You can see that I haven't worn out much of mine. I try not to drag it if I don't have to back here. Uh, coming up in here, you see where the uh, skeg is down in there, the retractable skeg. And then if you look along the hole here, you two see two grooves that go all the way down. It is my understanding that those grooves are really just for... Um, giving the hole a little bit of structure, a little bit of rigidity, and maybe a little flare, a little bit of um, cosmetic look to it. But it, on the inside of the kayak, it turns out being a nice place to sit your water bottle. So having a chine right here, a soft chine, then of course you got another one here on the side as well. So this gives you some second secondary stability. Um, these uh, harder chines on the side here can cause you some problems. When I was talking about earlier, if you end up uh, allowing water to be pushed against this. It'll start grabbing these and wanting to pull your boat down a little bit. And then of course here's a view of the nose. 
All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is the skirt for this. And I have a link in the description where you can get this skirt on Amazon. It is the W12. That's the um, numerology or number that they use for this one. That is the one that fits this boat. Let me show you a little bit about it. All right, so here I am. I had somebody help me put the skirt on. And so first thing I wanna tell you is you probably could get this on by yourself. It's gonna be a little tricky. I always put my back on first and I make sure I get it around the corners and then I try to keep the tension on it and go to the front and hook it around this front first and then work the sides on down. That's the best way I know to do it. You know, if you can figure out another way to do it, that's fine. But I had somebody help me. Generally speaking, I don't kite by myself on trips. I usually have somebody with me. I just use two people. Puts this on a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently. This is called the True Fit Spray Skirt by Wilderness Systems. It is designed specifically for this boat. It may fit other boats. I don't know. It just depends on the size of the cockpit. But True Fit meaning that it fits this boat truly. Let me let me show you some of the features of it. Some of the things I like about this skirt is this material around the edge is a very rubbery, very grippy type of material. So when you end up putting this on the cockpit, it's grabbing hold of it and isn't going to come off super easy. Now, one of the things about having a large cockpit such as this is if you get a huge dump of water come down on this, it's going to implode your skirt. So this is more of what I would call a rain skirt, or why they call it a spray skirt. A light amount of water, some small rapids coming over and maybe pushing, you know, uh, pushing down on isn't going to hurt it. But you start throwing massive amounts of water on this, going through some huge rapids, you may find this imploding potentially. And most likely it's going to be pulling up on this side. It does have a pull handle in case you go upside down or a pull strap, should I say. It's a nice bright orange, so maybe underwater you could see it. But even if you were sitting here, it might be hard for some of you to reach way up here and grab the handle or the strap like it would be on common spray skirts, but it has one that reaches the whole distance down here. So it makes it very easy to reach from where you're sitting, grab hold of that and just pull that skirt. It's gonna lift that rim and pop this thing off very quickly. It does have a little latch system here that you could use. That's so you could clip that onto something. Uh, maybe it's so that it, I don't know, not, not here of course, but so you can hang it up maybe in your shop to dry or whatever else use you find for it. Um, it is somewhere around $100. I would never say exactly because you and I both know that the prices change constantly on things like this. It has a zippered pocket. This is not a waterproof zippered pocket by any means, but it does have room for you to stick things in. I put maps in here. I've put trail mix in here. I put cliff bars in here. I put sunscreen in here. I put a lot of things in here that are okay with getting wet. Here's a little mesh part here so it can dry out or water can dump out of it if you if you've hung it up or something. Very good stitching as you can see on here. The zippers are very nice. They move very easily. Very nice part, very good feature there. This is a like a plastic bar in there. You can see me kind of deforming it. It actually has a strap in it. I don't know if you can see this strap part here that you end up tightening. And the more that you tighten that strap, the more this is going to arch up in the air. So you can actually control the how high this is lifted up in the air. And what this does is when the waves come over and hit your spray skirt, it allows it to then dump them off. It'll help them run off instead of collecting down on your spray skirt. Now I will tell you that this zipper here does have taped. Uh, it's kind of like a tape seam, if you will, but they're trying to waterproof it a little bit. Water is still going to get through there. Again, it's not meant to hold out water like a neoprene skirt would. It's just supposed to keep out most of it. So you can see where it's coming together there. If I flex it, you'll see where it opens up a little bit to, to expose the zipper under it. But they're doing the best they can to keep water out, and I think they've done a fantastic job. The taping where they've sewn, you can, might be able to see that the end of the tape there is very good throughout this whole entire, um, there's some more tape on the inside of where they've sewed. They've done a fantastic job of taping the seams to keep the water from coming in. But again, this, this is not going to be waterproof, but it is going to keep out um, the majority of the water. So it does unzip two different ways. Here's a zipper here at the top that goes around your body. Here's a zipper down here at the bottom. If you've got this one up top and you're sitting in here, you can easily reach forward, open that up and be able to reach down to get your drink, to get your snacks if you've kept down here. You're able to access the cockpit in front of you. And then of course, while it's still on you, 
you can then zip it back closed. Use this feature several, several times. The waistband part of this has these little snap-in hooks where you have like an overall type of suspenders that would go over your back to hold it up. I don't tend to use them. I don't feel like I need them. Um, here's a little snap portion. Once you've got it zipped up on your body, you reach over and snap that. That keeps it from just unzipping on you really easy. This has the Velcro sizing, so once you get in there, you would then close that Velcro, pull it forward, and then attach it to uh, fit your body circumference. So that's very, very nice. Now guys, I realize that the video is a little bit long. I've done everything I know how to in my power to tell you about this boat, to show you the skirt that fits it, some of its features. Let me tell you that it's going to be good on rivers, it's going to be good on lakes, it's going to be good on rapids, up to maybe class two. There are some people that take it higher than that, but I kind of explained to you some of the things to think about if you're wanting to do that. A very, very good boat, lots of good, good uses. Top of the line, in my opinion, for what that is. We love the Aspire 105. If you are thinking about this boat, you really can't go wrong unless you're just wanting to get into some uh, heavy white water usage. Or if you're wanting to do much longer trips, you may want to look at a boat that's a little bit longer. These aren't super slow, but they're also not super fast. So guys, I hope you like this review. If there's any questions you have, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to check them and get back with you if I can. So uh, definitely check out, I put the skirt in the, uh, uh, the Amazon link to that skirt. That's where I got both of mine from. I'll put that in the um, comments, or I'm sorry, in the description below. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, if, you, if you got this boat or you're hoping to get this boat, you're going to love it. We'll see you.